I can't believe I'm actually holding this in my hands. This is so cool. This is my first book. It's it's super weird to see your own name on the cover, but it's a really cool feeling. And it seems like this book has been a work in progress for like years. Well, well, it has been. I guess it has actually been several years. I started working on this when I still lived in the US and I've almost been in the Netherlands for two years now. But I'm so happy, so proud of this book. It's Careers in Food Science from Undergraduate to Professional. The cover, I feel like, makes it look like a textbook, but I would think of it more like your handbook or your guide to food science. Like the first part is a general introduction to food science if you know very little about the field or what type of jobs you could get. But then we get into like the next part is getting your bachelor's degree in food science. Then we have a whole section on like different careers in food science where each career is actually a chapter. So you get a lot of detail. And then we go into either going into industry, you know, or should you go to graduate school to get your master's or PhD into food science. So like I said, it's really like a guide to get you to where you want to go as a food scientist. But I feel like there's a ton of good stuff in here. I should know because I edited literally every single chapter multiple times. So I want to give you a little sneak peek on some of my favorite chapters or new, new things to this second edition. The first thing I want to highlight is a chapter very early on in part one. Remember I said this was just like really a general introduction. But chapter three is the first jobs for food scientists. And this was the chapter that I wrote. So I'm a little bit biased, but this is a great chapter. It was really fun to write because I actually co-authored it with Stephen Hill, who wrote this chapter in the first edition of the book. Uh, but Stephen, he is the chief science officer at Team Marzetti, the food company. You probably know Team Marzetti best for uh, like salad dressings or salad uh, ingredients. But Steven, he is someone who we met via Zoom. It was still, it was COVID. Um, he just has like done so much, had so many different experiences in the food industry at different really big, well-known companies. Like every time we had a Zoom meeting to talk about writing the chapter, I just try to be like, a sponge and just like absorb everything he was telling me uh, because you know he has way more experience than me so this was it was like a super fun experience to write this with Steven. Now part two this is really on getting a bachelor's degree in food science so how can you have a very successful and fruitful undergraduate degree? Then we go on to part three. This is talking about going into the industry. How can you, you know, if you were a good student, how then do you become, you know, successful at an industry job? Part four, so this, I really love part four because this is where, like I said, each chapter is on a different uh, career in food science. And what I love about these chapters is we ask someone who has that career to write the chapter. So each chapter in this part is by a different author that has had uh, probably this job or has experience uh, in this type of role in industry. So we cover some of the major jobs like quality assurance, uh, production, product development. I got a shout out to uh, do a shout out to the product development chapter. This was written by one of my good friends from getting our bachelor's degree in food science, Christine Jalek. Uh, we met when we maybe were sophomores in the food science program and uh, we still keep in touch. She's one of my good friends. So great product development chapter written by my friend. Um, sales, science and technology. Again, this is written by one of my good friends from graduate school, Amy. And I know Amy was super busy and, uh, when we asked her to write this chapter. And so I'm so thankful she put the time in. I did annoy her a lot. I texted her a lot reminding her to write this chapter on science and technology, but she did a wonderful, a wonderful job. But what is new in this second edition is some jobs that uh, are maybe more common now than they were. I think the last edition was over 10 years old. So I want to point out um, a really cool chapter is on food for good. So using food science to help the world. And I feel like many of the students I work with ask me like, how can I use my food science degree for good? 
So chapter 22 is on exactly this. It's written by a woman named Donna Rosa. I met Donna through IFT or the Institute of Food Technologists. And she is someone who is really working to uh, have food scientists help out areas of the world that maybe uh, people are going hungry, food is spoiling and going to waste. She has a very interesting story on using your food science degree for good. Ooh, a next chapter. I really enjoyed editing this chapter because he has a super interesting story. So we added chapter 24. It's on entrepreneurship and consulting. And this was written by Derek Spores. And he really goes into detail of his career story. So he started out at Ben and Jerry's, the ice cream company, and then later uh, found out he was more interested in entrepreneurship and really building his own thing and becoming a, a consultant. And he really goes into detail of like what mistakes he made, what worked for him. It's a really detailed trap chapter if you're interested in entrepreneurship on working for yourself or on consulting. But as you can see, we have a lot of other, I mean, there's this part has so many different uh, chapters on various careers in food science because with a food science degree, you can really then go whichever way your passion leads you. There's a lot of different jobs. And then for anyone in graduate school pursuing your master's degree or your PhD, this is a very challenging time. Uh, the last section is on graduate school experience, the experience of getting your PhD, like what is expected from you, how to pick the right PhD program. And I know during my master's and PhD, I would have taken all the advice I, and if anyone had any advice to offer, I would have taken it because it's a really, it can be a really tough experience at certain moments. So the last part is for you PhD students and you master's students. And while I'm talking about grad school, I just want to put, you know, say one thing about mentorship because actually uh, one of the other editors is my master's and PhD advisor. And when you pick someone to do your degrees with, especially a higher degree, make sure your advisor is someone who's going to mentor you and bring you along on new opportunities and help you grow. Because without uh, my advisor, I would not have been involved in this book, right? And, and before he, he sort of pitched that I should be an editor in this book, I, this was not in my plan at all, right? Like I, I would have said I would love to write a book, but like I don't have the opportunity, I don't have the connections, I have no idea. And basically, my advisor brought me along, taught me how the, you know, how this is done, connected to me, to, uh, you know, with the people at Springer at the publishing company. And there, this is not the only time my, my former PhD advisor has done this for me. So really, if you are going to do a master's or PhD, make sure you pick someone that is going to help you grow, but also like kind of pushes you to grow. Because like I said, a couple years ago when we started this process, like a, writing a, a book, editing a book was not on my radar at all. So I hope you enjoy the book if you're interested. There's obviously physical copies like I have here, um, but there's also a PDF version. And if you're already a student at a university, if you go to your university, like your library website, you can probably get access to the PDF for free. Again, I hope you enjoy the book. If you read it, let me know if you have any feedback or comments.